What's going on guys, Skit Gaming here, and today we're going to be talking about the most important part of factions in Lionheart's Crusade, how snazzy their uniforms look. Now, there are a few things that need to be said before I get into this ranking. Firstly, this doesn't indicate anything in particular about any of these factions. Most of them just replicate the authentic historical uniforms, and some of them don't even make you wear these. Second, this is just the default LR uniform that you're given when you join a faction. I won't be taking into account how cool their other clothes look or what kind of people they are, just how much these uniforms appeal to me. Capiche? Alright, let's get into it. Number 16, Kingdom of Sicily. The average KOS soldier sports a standard gambeson in a two-tone configuration. Too bad neither of those tones is actually pleasing to look at. The light gray kettle helm really looks out of place with the rest of this uniform, but the KOS isn't the worst defender in that field. This uniform doesn't have any insignias on it, but considering the Kingdom of Sicily's flag, this is probably for the best. The colors red and yellow make people hungry. Am I here to fight a war or advertise for a fast food chain? Yo, editing skit here. So, the reason I only have photos of this uniform is because I forgot to record it, and then when I went back to go get it when I realized I didn't record it, it turns out they changed their uniform, like a day after I finished narrating this script. These guys did it, and the Eastern Roman Empire did it as well. Changed their uniforms. I'm not gonna rewrite the entire script and re-record everything to change the rankings for them, I'm gonna still go off what they used to have. But, uh, yeah, just a heads up, they don't look like that anymore. They look a little better now. Kinda reminded me of those guys on Naboo from Star Wars Episode One. The helmet's a little weird, but it's definitely an improvement, I'd say. Anyway, editing skit out, I guess. Let's continue. Number 15, Holy Roman Empire. This was a tough one, and I really hate to do it, but HRE's uniform is not the best. The colors are just a bit too strong and vibrant. I don't mind the yellow so much, but the black is so black that it disappears into the undergarments. The stitching on both sides is too close to the base colors, so it barely shows up. The orange feet on the insignia remind me of Big Bird from Sesame Street. Once again, HRE are the homies, and I love you guys, but this ain't it, Chief. Number 14, Seljuk Sultanate. The Seljuk uniform isn't bad, per se, it's just not great. The amount of empty space on the torso is bugging me. Just toss an emblem or something on there. I like the painted helmet, and the belt buckle is an original touch. But overall, the blue and the vertical stripes remind me too much of pajamas. I'm here for god, gold, and glory, not a nap. Number 13, Order of Assassins. The Assassins will always start off with some originality points by default, but I'm afraid that's where my praise ends. The shadow that conceals your face looks more like a goofy visor than anything. I've always been of the opinion that lower half face masks are better than upper half face masks. Plus, when you take the hood off, the whole feel is lost, now you're just some dude. Number 12, Zengid Emirate. We're past the point of uniforms that offend my eyes, so everything from here on out is at least adequate. I love the Zengid color scheme, red and gold always go great together. I especially dig the helmet. If you haven't noticed, I enjoy it when those are painted or otherwise decorated. The Zengids have a similar problem to the Seljuks. There's just a lot of unutilized space, but it's not as bad here. Overall, a very simplistic design. It'd be better if the lines didn't look like they were drawn on with a sharpie. Number 11, Kingdom of France. The French uniform is what I imagine the Cub Scouts would wear in 1192. It's got a garish color scheme and a simple design, and yet, I can't bring myself to hate it. I think you would be able to pull it off if it weren't for the Kettle Helm, which looks very out of place being the only gray article of clothing. If you painted the helmet, this uniform would make the top half of my list. Number 10, Abbasid Caliphate. I dig the green and the painted helmet with the color trim is on point. Combined with the different texture and shade of the undergarments, this uniform is solid enough to stand on its own two feet. But it suffers from the same issue as most of the other Muslim ones. There's so much plain, empty space on your chest! Put something there! A strap, an insignia, I don't care, just break up that space! Number 9, Principality of Antioch. You've got to respect their ambition, trying to do so much in one uniform color-wise. However, ambition doesn't always lead to success, and this uniform is no exception. Bright red and bright blue never really go well together, and the overall effect makes you look like some superhero's child sidekick. It even shaves off your beard for some reason, so you've always got a baby face. The only reason that this one beats the Kingdom of France is that the helmet matches a lot more with the red painted crown the gray sleeves under the gambeson. Very flashy, very gay. Number 8, Cypriot Rebellion. 
The Cypress uniform has a lot going on. It's incredibly detailed compared to most of the others, which isn't necessarily a good thing. I'm not a huge fan of the dark color scheme, the gray is way too close to the purple in my opinion, and the whole uniform is too dark overall. The cross on the chest is a color that doesn't appear anywhere else on the uniform, despite the fact that there is another, better yellow on the fringes everywhere else. All in all, not a fan. Number 7, Teutonic Order. The Teutons embrace a very simplistic design, which is part of their identity. I'm a sucker for black and white color schemes, and these guys pull it off pretty well. The silver helmet complements the uniform in a good way, and the cross emblem isn't too fancy. The only issue I have with this uniform is the yellow. There's just enough of it for you to notice, but not enough to stand out. If those lines were just a bit thicker, or appeared somewhere else on the uniform, I would probably excuse this. But they're not. And they don't. So, yeah. Number 6, Knight's Hospitaller. These guys almost invert the colors of the Teutonic Order, with black being the base and white appearing on top of it. I will say that the black is a bit too black, kinda like the HRE example, to the point that it can swallow up the details of the Gambeson. Otherwise, the colors are phenomenal. The silver and black helmet reminds me of Cole from LEGO Ninjago, who was always my favorite ninja as a kid. Overall, grade A uniform, keep it up. Number 5, Kingdom of Jerusalem. We have officially entered what I consider to be drip territory. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of blue uniforms, but the KOJ makes it work. It's a lot more subtle than the blue in the French or Antioch ones, and it provides a perfect amount of contrast between the gambeson and the sleeves. The blue helmet pulls the whole look together. My only gripe with this one is that the gold on the logo doesn't really appear anywhere else. I think that some gold fringe on the helmet or sleeves could work wonders. The more I look at this uniform, the more I like it, so I gotta move on before I shift the rankings around again. Number 4, Ayyubid Sultanate. The Ayyubids understand fashion. They must have followed in the footsteps of the great Egyptian pharaoh Achman Ra, who is famously quoted as saying, With threads like these, I can't lose. The abundance of different colors, shades, textures, and layers is impressive to look at. You don't often see cyan and yellow in a uniform, but they go together fairly well. Finally, the Ayyubids must have heard my comments about the other Muslim uniforms and added a strap that crosses over the chest, finally filling in that empty space and putting my mind at ease. All of this detail comes at a cost, though. In my opinion, a uniform this elaborate is more fit for a king than a standard foot soldier. It's just a bit too flashy for my tastes. Number 3, Eastern Roman Empire. This is why only fools are heroes. Because in this world, you either drip or drown, Spider-Man! The Byzantines represent the final evolution of the Roman aesthetic. The intricately engraved armor stands out from the red and gold tunic, the strap across the chest adds asymmetry and utility, and there are crosses on every available surface. It reminds me of the enemies from that Assassin's Creed Revelations trailer, which, yeah, it should. The color scheme can't be beat, no one area is too uniform, and the shading is extensive. I will say that I'm not a fan of the leather tassels, especially around the waist. It reminds me of a skirt, which can look really cool. I mean, my Mordhau character has been rocking one for years now, but not on this uniform. It also makes me feel the same way as the Ayubid one. This guy looks more like elite infantry or an honor guard, not a standard run-of-the-mill man-at-arms. As an HR uniform, this would probably top my list, no questions asked. As an LR uniform though, it just doesn't do it for me. Hey, editing skit here again. So remember earlier when I said that the Kingdom of Sicily uniform got an update? Well, the same thing happened with these guys. I checked back in and the Byzantine LR uniform has changed. The new one is honestly pretty dope, I like it. It's definitely more fitting as an LR uniform, and the helmet is weird, and I, it's, it's weird, but I like it because it's original, okay? I wouldn't wear it personally, but I think that it's very interesting to look at, at the very least. Alright, back to the ranking. Number 2, Knights Templar. This uniform is the ultimate classic. When you picture a crusader in your head, this guy is what you see. It's very similar to the Teutonic uniform, but the darker sleeves and pants add more contrast to make the helmet and gambeson stand out. It doesn't make the same mistake as the HRE or Hospitaller uniforms of being so dark as to cover up any detail, but instead remains light enough that you can easily make out the folds in the fabric. The red cross on the chest clearly and directly communicates who this guy represents. 
Unlike the Teutonic Cross, it's uniform in color and bold enough to stand out from a distance. This makes the Templar Gambeson look better than most of the two-tone ones we've already seen. Some people may be confused as to why this uniform beats the previous Ayubid and Byzantine ones. And to that, I say... Who the f*** do you think you are? But seriously, I believe that in many cases, less is more. The Knights Templar puts that concept on full display by managing to look good without a dozen different layers or a ton of shading. All in all, a very good uniform. If I ranked all of them, this one would be like, second place. Number 1. Kingdom of England the English LR uniform is the epitome of grace and balance. You start with a solid red and white gambeson that splits half and half on the torso. Now, I know what you're thinking. Skit, you've already shown us two-tone gambesons, and they're always ugly. But wait, this one does something special. The colors flip at the waist, and the uniform takes on a vaguely checkerboard-like pattern. This alone would be cool, but not first place worthy. That's when the twin lions come in, mirrored over each breast in opposing colors. Not only does this preserve the split down the middle, but it adds the perfect amount of detail to the torso without overdoing it. Finally, to cap it all off, the sleeves and pants are the same shade of grey as the kettle helm, which, if we're honest, is the fedora of medieval warfare. This grey complements the white of the gambeson while creating vertical balance to match the existing horizontal balance. If you ran all these uniforms through some sort of algorithm that would try to determine which was the most pleasing to the human eye, this is the one it would choose. Some people might think that I only rank this one at the top because I'm a KOE member, but I honestly think that the same thing would happen if I'd never played this game and just saw pictures of these. So there you have it, all 16 default uniforms as of March 2022, ranked from worst to best. Like I said before, this doesn't indicate anything about the factions, I just like things that are pleasant to look at. I'll link the game down in the description if you want to play for yourself. That's it for this time. Skit Gaming, signing out. Goodbye.